Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn it into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. But like any good scientist knows, the best way to find out is to try for yourself, which you can do for free, like right now. So let's get to it. If you've taken a physics class, then you might have learned about displacement vectors, and then velocity as a change in displacement, acceleration as a change in velocity, and then force as f equals ma. But with sketchy physics, we're not going to start with displacement, we're going to start with forces. So that means we're going to kick off this lesson with a push, because that's what a force is. Something pushing on something else. Well, sometimes it's more of a pull. But a pull is really just a special kind of push, if you think about it. In fact, this was Isaac Newton's first law of motion. Without some kind of force coming along to push, you either have no motion at all, or you just have some really boring motion, constant motion in a straight line forever. We've depicted force with this giant newt pushing a boulder on his way to siege this castle. Why did we pick a newt for this Newtonian mechanics lesson? Oh, we just picked an animal at random. Total coincidence. Even though all forces are pushes or pulls, and they behave the same mathematically, there are a bunch of different types and sources of force. Gravitational force, electrostatic force, frictional force, normal force, many more. Our boulder-pushing Newt is wearing a multicolored tunic to represent the wide variety of forces. There are technically only four fundamental forces, gravity, electromagnetism, the weak nuclear force, and the strong nuclear force, but that gets more into the theoretical realm, and we're going to stay practical here. Forces are typically denoted with the variable F, with a subscript to say what kind of a force it is. F sub G for gravity, F sub F for friction, F sub N for normal force, and so on. Force is a vector quantity, which means forces will have both a magnitude and a direction. To remind you of this, the newt is branded on his arm with an F to represent the variable, and he's carrying a spear pointed in his intended direction of motion to represent the vector. You'll also often see F net, which is the vector sum of all the forces on an object. If F net is zero, then it's just like there's no force at all, even if that F net is the result of a bunch of forces all canceling each other out. The concept of F net is symbolized by these puny humans pushing back against the newt on the other side of the boulder, and one of them has a net. The SI unit for force is the newton, which is a kilogram meter per second squared. Kgm over s squared is a pretty big stack of letters, but we'll see it pared down soon enough as we see what forces actually do once they start pushing. What forces do then, or net non-zero forces at least, is they accelerate things. An acceleration is a change in motion, and it could be a change in the speed or the direction of that motion. To introduce acceleration, we have another F-branded newt, this time pushing a catapult with a crank shaped like an A, the variable used for acceleration. This is also where mass, M, comes into play. The more massive something is, the more force it takes to accelerate. This smaller newt is learning this lesson the hard way. She's smaller than her big sister, but she's trying to push the same massive catapult. Her smaller force leads to a smaller acceleration, which is why her catapult has a smaller A crank. Isaac Newton also figured this one out a few hundred years ago. It was captured in his second law of motion, F equals MA. That's why these newts, with their Fs and their two arms and the letters on their siege engines, each look suspiciously like the F equals MA equation. We can also do some simple algebra on this equation to turn it into A equals F over M, which can be a more intuitive way to remember it. It makes clearer that acceleration will be directly proportional to force and inversely proportional to mass. Acceleration is a vector, just like force, and it's measured in meters per second squared or meters per second per second. Now let's move from acceleration to velocity. Similar to how forces cause acceleration, acceleration causes changes in an object's velocity when applied over time. Ah, here he is. Fred the Wizard, the guy who's been leaving all these Fs all over the other newts. 
It looks like he's only got three fingers, so maybe the F is a handprint? Fred's going to show us how forces, and the acceleration that comes from them, can change an object's velocity. These rocks, just fired out of their catapults at the same velocity, all start with identical motion in straight lines. Velocity is also a vector, so these V-labeled arrows represent velocity vectors. But Fred's got three different techniques to aim the rocks where he wants them. Using his magic pushing spell, he can apply an acceleration in the same direction as velocity, speeding up the rock. He can apply an acceleration in the opposite direction as the velocity, slowing down the rock. Or he can apply an acceleration with some other directional component, which will curve the rock's motion and change the direction of the resulting velocity. Velocity is how far something travels each unit of time. For example, how many miles it travels per hour, or how many fathoms per fortnight, or how many meters per second. And its SI unit is meters per second. You also might run into the non-vector, or scalar, cousin of velocity, which is called speed. Speed is also measured in meters per second, so if speed has the same units as velocity, why is it a different thing? Well, speed is just the rate an object moves while velocity is the rate and direction. In other words, speed doesn't care what direction an object moves, only how fast it moves. The value of speed will always be positive. That's how scalar quantities work. And as it turns out, this army isn't just newts. It's got lizards, too. Scaly lizards, to represent scalar quantities. Though, lizards might not be treated too well in this army since this one's being used as catapult ammunition. He's got an S on his tunic for speed, and a dagger with a plus sign hilt to remind us that speed must be positive. There's just one more step to go down this ladder. We're all the way down to plain old distance and displacement. Distance is the entire path taken by an object, whereas displacement is the straight line, including direction, between where the object started and where it ended. That means distance is scalar and displacement is a vector. We've drawn these two tacticians to illustrate the difference between distance and displacement. Let's start with distance, which is denoted by the letter D. The scaly lizard with a D shield is pointing out a roundabout path to the castle, and he's considering all the steps they'd have to take to get there, representing how distance is scalar. Then there's displacement, which is generally denoted by the letter X, or, if you're living in a war-torn reptile-amphibian society, by a commander axolotl, complete with a badass X scar. As she points out, the much more obvious direct route to the castle, representing that displacement is a vector between the start and end of a path, regardless of the twists and turns taken along the way. Remember, displacement is a vector, which is symbolized by the displacement arrow on this map. And the SI unit for displacement is just plain old meters. Same thing for distance. All right, well, I don't want to brag, but I'd make pretty good catapult ammo myself, so I'm not going to stick around to see who wins. But before we go, let's survey this newt siege party one more time. Force is a vector, and conceptually, all forces are pushes and pulls. Separate forces often push in different directions on the same object, and when you add up all the force vectors acting on an object, the resulting value is called the net force. When a non-zero net force is applied to an object, it experiences acceleration, according to the equation F equals ma, or A equals F over m. The larger the mass, the more force required to achieve a given acceleration. When acceleration is applied to an object over time, its velocity changes. Acceleration can change the magnitude or the direction of an object's velocity, or both, depending on the angle between the acceleration and velocity vectors. Speed is the scalar version of velocity. And distance and displacement are the scalar and vector measures, respectively, of how far an object has moved. Distance measures every step traveled regardless of direction, but displacement cuts out any wandering around, it's just the arrow between the start and end. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's two laws of motion. But Newton has three laws of motion. Well, to that I say, your action demands my reaction, which is fear not. 
The third law of motion is coming up soon. Enjoy this lesson? Want to see more? Let us know by using the link in the description below.